had a flag, holding a flag that has 48 stars. Life is living in a constant search, looking for something that isn't there. This is how Patty describes life with dementia. Born an only child, in a few years, she would become valedictorian of her high school, graduate magna cum laude from Syracuse University. Now, daily activities often leave her lost and confused. I walk down in the kitchen in the mornings, and I have to stand there and say, okay, you make your coffee. And the voice goes, how do you do that? I mean, really, I do that with everything. I mean, there were, when I first realized I was doing this, I would be turning around in a circle in my kitchen saying, uh, okay. And I didn't tell anybody I was doing this because I didn't want anybody to know. Generally, uh, patients with Alzheimer's or other dementia uh, don't recognize signs of the diseases themselves. It's re generally recognized by their families or their friends who notice that something isn't quite right. Uh, they're forgetting things, they're, they're just not behaving as they normally would. Things are slipping by them. And oftentimes these are very subtle. It takes months to a couple of years before they really realize something is dreadfully wrong here. As it continues, it impairs everyday life. So eventually, people cannot take care of themselves. Dementia and the most common form of dementia, Alzheimer's disease, are largely associated with aging and are among the fastest growing and most devastating epidemics in the country. Dementia and Alzheimer's disease are diseases of the brain that affects memory, but can march on uh, either slowly or abruptly to involve other cognitive functions. Apple, table, penny. Can you repeat that please? Apple, table, Such as planning, sequencing, naming, calculation to the point that it affects someone's ability to function uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Can you say the truck rolled over the stone bridge? Let's say it again. Okay, I'm going to take the flat Okay, so. The truck rolled over. Loss of memory really defines the disease. And it also defines who we are as people. Without our memory, we have no past, we can't plan the future, and we can't appreciate the present. So I think many of us truly fear getting Alzheimer's disease because we fear losing who we are as people. The truck rolled over the stone bridge. Dementia is a remarkable disease. It, it spares nobody. Uh, it spares nobody regardless of, of race, gender, uh, and wealth, socioeconomic status, what you did in life. Dementia and Alzheimer's disease affects about 10-15% of people over the age of 65 and up to 50% of people over the age of 85. The people, uh, the Americans over the age of 85 is the fastest growing population segment in our country. It's going to be an enormous problem be only because we are just at the beginning of the baby boom generation, the boomer generation turning 65. So if you fast forward that to 10, 20 years, you can see the magnitude of this problem. The statistics on Alzheimer's disease are alarming. Every 68 seconds, someone else is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Not only is it increasing in prevalence, but it's, it's probably our most costly healthcare condition and will continue to be so for, for many years until we have some corrective actions. It's, it's billions. I think if you took dementia as a, an industry, I think it's, it's bigger than Walmart. I would characterize this disease as the most important medical problem today. More than 5 million Americans suffer from Alzheimer's disease, more than 30 million people worldwide. And because the fastest growing segment in many populations is the elderly, uh, the expectation is that the prevalence of Alzheimer's disease will triple in coming decades. When I started doing research, the cost of Alzheimer's disease care was around $100 billion a year. Now it's far over $200 billion a year. And again, by 2050, it's estimated to be more than $1.2 trillion a year. In fact, Alzheimer's disease, uh, which now has moved up from eighth or ninth leading cause of death to sixth 
leading cause of death, will bankrupt the world's economy. It will bankrupt the United States, it will bankrupt the European economies, it will bankrupt the Japanese economies. Any of these countries that have populations that can live long enough to get Alzheimer's disease, which is a disease of aging, will face these tremendous economic burdens. Just five years after leaving the White House, former President Ronald Reagan's diagnosis brought Alzheimer's directly into the spotlight. It was um, 1994 when my father was diagnosed, and um, people really weren't talking about Alzheimer's that much. It was like a well-kept secret. And uh, suddenly overnight, everyone in the world knew that my father had Alzheimer's. I had to accept this is how I was going to lose him, and I didn't know, nobody could tell me how. I mean, nobody could tell me how it was, how the disease was going to unfold or, or what was going to happen. Popular TV personality and entrepreneur Lisa Gibbons has spent years in front of the camera. But few knew her personal story unfolding in recent years behind the scenes. Alzheimer's, I think, is the cruelest sentence that can happen to a family. And it does happen to a family, like death in slow motion. So for our family, we felt like what millions of other families feel like. Um, we were really lost. Lisa's mother, who had been her lifelong inspiration and best friend, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. My mom's decline was over 10 years. I remember one of the first times that I had to come to terms with the fact that she didn't know me, which is, I think, the hardest moment for all caregivers. You know, how can you be so close and so important and share so much and look at this woman and there's just a vacant stare? I had gone home to help my mom in her house and we were making the bed. And mom looked up and she said, you are such a nice lady. Who are you again? And I took a moment to feel that awful hurt and that stab in my heart. And then I knew it was the disease. It was not my mom. And I said, I'm your daughter. My name is Lisa, and I'm always going to be here for you. It's a loss like no other. Um, because as this disease progresses and as people lose their memories, they also lose their relationships. And so family members talk about living with a stranger, living with someone who's no longer there anymore because that relationship is lost. The losses are staggering and they're often slow. Um, it's been termed a long goodbye. Um, the patient is slowly losing pieces of of who they were. So it's a devastating disease for families and their loved ones. Um, a difficult aspect is that patients often have limited insight into their cognitive losses, their memory losses. So they may not understand the devastation and the losses that they have suffered where the family members see it and they feel it and they feel the loss of that loved one very deeply. Alzheimer's has a tremendous impact on the family. So first there is the disease itself that steals the patient away from the family. Their, their personality changes, they become a different person in, in many cases, they become forgetful, they need more help. So one effect is just the grief that the family goes through and seeing their loved one uh, disappear before their eyes. The toll is emotional, physical, and financial. Patty had plans to leave an inheritance for her son. I have a reverse mortgage, so they can't take my house away from me. They being the big monster, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, I could be drained of every bit of finances I have, and which would be his inheritance. That terrifies me. How, how can this happen? I've taken over many of the family responsibilities that I you know, didn't do before paying. Well, I always paid bills, but now I do the taxes and 
things of that she nature. She does everything. <laughs> well, Rabbi Harry Roth cares for his wife Lillian, who has Alzheimer's, virtually every moment of the day. We was having lunch just a few minutes ago, and we looked up and one of the women, whom I didn't recognize, so she must be a new resident here, was being wheeled out in a wheelchair, and above her head there were three balloons which said one, zero, zero. She, she turned 100 years old today. There are people here that are 100, over 100 years old, and uh, the fear, the estimate how many people are going to be suffering from Alzheimer's in 10 years or 20 years is, is, is unbelievable. This year, the federal government declared war on Alzheimer's disease, releasing its first ever national Alzheimer's plan. The national plan um, is, is first and foremost, I think, about uh, putting the spotlight on this condition and so focusing people in terms of their efforts and coming up with solutions. Uh, a, a big part of that plan is actually in investing in research. But there are other aspects of the plan that have to do with supporting health care and helping health care really reinvent itself. We're not ashamed or afraid to use the term Alzheimer's. No. And I no, think it's so many people think it like a venereal disease. I, I can't understand that because if you demystify it, then people aren't perhaps going to be as afraid and they'll get help when they can. More on how the U.S. healthcare system is reinventing itself to address the Alzheimer's epidemic. Very good. The promise of new Alzheimer's drugs and what we can do to help prevent Alzheimer's and other dementias in our next reports. Deux, trois,